So the Just World belief, I think for me, this was one of the most interesting things I've ever studied. Um, it's not my work, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's generally attributed to Melvin Lerner from the sort of 70s, 80s and, and, um, and 90s actually. Um, and more than that, because it Melvin Lerner's work has influenced an entire body of work around the belief in a just world, um, and around victim blaming, and around justice, and around beliefs um, about who deserves what, like deserving and attribution and things like that. So the best way to explain it, the way I generally explain it when I'm teaching, is that it's that sort of belief that's whole that's 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 held by people that good things happen to good people and bad things happen to bad people and in the 80s one theorist basically said that's ridiculous that's so crude as if people would believe that but the reality is when you think about it a lot of people do believe that they believe um you know you reap what you sow what goes around comes around um, you get your just deserves and there's lots of linguistic um, examples in our um, discourses and in our like they're almost like colloquial terms in certain areas people use certain things like karma will get you in the end um, and what goes around comes around is extremely common um, and there are ways there there are our ways of expressing our belief in a just world that there's this sort of cosmic force that balances out the world that that's sort of watching us and if that person does a bad thing something bad will happen to them in like retaliation or as a consequence of their behavior sort of like the way that judgment is explained in religions it's sort of like something watches you and it's judging you are you a good person or are you a bad person? Do you deserve punishment or reward? And and that's um, the core, really, of what Melvin Lerner was talking about, was this belief that we hold, even those of us that are not religious, um, there's almost a feeling that there's something that balances the world out, that if, if you're a bad person who keeps doing bad things, eventually something will come back and get you. Um, and that's what I mean about even people who, who wouldn't specifically say, oh, that's God or that's karma or um, it's a it's a spiritual thing or, or whatever it is that, that someone explains it to be. Other people um, don't name what that thing is. It's almost like the way the world works. People sort of say, well, you know, that's the way the world works. If you if that happened to them because they deserved it there's no evidence for that for that level of intelligent justice in the world um but we feel a lot safer believing that there is so we can we can tell ourselves i'm a good person you know i'm a good person i do a good job i look after my kids i don't hurt anybody so therefore you know good things should happen to me and bad things should not happen to me because i don't deserve bad things to happen to me but the flip side of that, obviously, is if bad things happen to you, it's because you deserve it. You've done something bad. And that was when I really started becoming interested in karma. Um, for me personally, growing up, I heard it all the time. People would say, oh, karma will get you in the end or oh, it's bad karma, that is. And that's coming from people who are non-religious. Um, generally, the white people that I grew up around were using this sort of concept of karma. I don't think they even knew what it was. Everybody talks about it, though. Um, even the saying karma's a bitch, uh, which I hate. Um, and I've just become really interested in how did karma get mixed up into all of our sort of non-religious, non-karmic non language? Like, we talk about it all the time and don't really have any concept of what it is. And so I started reading from other scholars... Um, especially like um asian like feminist scholars that talked about karma religion um victim blaming um just world belief and things like that and the karma stuff really interested me because it essentially is suggesting that the reason bad things happen to you is because you did something bad in a past life 
So karma is the is the force of balancing out good and evil, reward and punishment, consequences for your actions, but not necessarily in this life, in the next life, like you know, people that believe in um, reincarnation and things like that. So one of the things that interested me was these scholars writing about women and girls who had disclosed like generally buddhist women and girls or some um hindu women and girls who had um disclosed sexual violence and abuse and been told that that was their karma for something they did in a past life now how do you argue that exactly how do you go well um yeah but they shouldn't be allowed to rape me should they well you must have done something in a past life how do you get out of that reasoning how do you get out of that that's incredibly powerful um and so i started also reading about the way belief in a just world links into religions and i learned that um see i did i didn't know this before now and it made me read loads about it was that technically if you've come back as a woman so if you've been reincarnated as a woman um according to like sort of karmic value the reason you are a woman is because you were a bad man in a previous life so if you have um been male before and you have committed a lot of bad acts or sins you'll come back as a woman as a punishment now people don't <laughs> people don't talk about that they don't talk about the fact that if you're currently living in this world right now as a woman, there's a reason uh, why you're a woman. And so there was qu there's quite a lot of theories that I've read that sort of suggested that, therefore, any female oppression and female suffering is actually part of karma, um, which would include sexual violence, domestic violence, slavery, prostitution, um, dying during childbirth, the pains of labour anything really could be argued as part of your punishment of of this life uh, so, which is extremely hard for women but it's not just karma because belief in a just world is also very prevalent in protestant faith so or of protestant roots um of muslim faith um all of the um derivatives of christian and catholic faith is everywhere it's absolutely everywhere but it comes in different forms um, so it might be that it's about judgment from God or a judgment day or the fact that God will strike you down if you have done this, this and this or that it's God's will that something bad happens to you because you're this, that and the other. Um, or it might be, you know, a belief that actions have consequences in this life or um, it might be heaven and hell that um, if you have been bad or committed sins, then the way of rebalancing out that cosmic justice is that bad people are punished eternally and good people are rewarded eternally. So we've always had these narratives um, and belief in a just world might come from all of those different beliefs over history and culture and religion. But when you really dig down into it, it's because we're not prepared to accept the randomness of life, of or the fact that good, amazing, brilliant, life-changing things can happen to people who are horrible. I don't think we're ready for that. I don't think we're ready for the acknowledgement that people can live these good, clean, healthy lives and just be subject to such oppression and abuse and horrors. And then they might, you know, die early or get a horrible illness or be murdered. And, and that that threatens our belief in a just world because we think that's not fair. This is why you get people saying things like, um, I don't know, say, for example, a child dies of cancer and someone says it's not fair. It's not fair for a child to have cancer. No, it's not. But the world isn't fair either. So it's not about what's fair and what's not. It's not being dished out as punishment. Um, it's the same as when people say... Um, you know, I don't know, say, for example, a, a person who everybody really loves and is very popular dies in a car crash and they'll say they didn't deserve this. Of course they didn't deserve it. But that that's that 
belief in a just world seeping in because what you're actually saying when you say those things is that that person, specifically that person, didn't deserve to die. So implicitly suggesting that other people might deserve it, um, but that person didn't deserve it. But also that means at some level we believe that it happened to them for a reason that maybe they died in a car crash for a reason but they didn't deserve it to happen it shouldn't have happened to them it should have maybe happened to someone else or maybe it shouldn't have happened to anyone because nobody deserves to die in a car crash it's very very complicated so the reason that this this sort of links so heavily to victim blaming is because there's been quite a lot of psychological studies that suggest that people who hold um it's like called high or strong belief in a just world so who believe these things are more likely to blame victims of sexual violence and domestic violence now the issue with that is that over a period of time the studies have been very inconsistent so there's a very large body of work that finds that over and over again so it finds that people who hold strong belief in a just world views are much more likely to blame victims of sexual violence for their suffering however there's also a body of work um, that's found that belief in a just world and victim blaming are not correlated or that it's a very very weak correlation where we wouldn't say that those things were related um you know strongly or in a particular direction and then there's the body of work that has found it sometimes it's related and sometimes it's not so that suggests again to me that belief in a just world is is probably a very important theory to victim blaming but it can't be the only reason why we do it